Today, you are going to hear about Roger Wolcott Sperry and his slip brain research. In the early 1950s, Roger Sperry and Ronald Myers discovered the first split brain. Split brain is the result of the corpus callosum being severed, disconnecting the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Initially, Sperry and Myers began experimenting with cats and monkeys, and in 1961, the first human patient was subject to test after undergoing the split brain surgery. Before Roger Sperry's research, the classic view of the brain was that the left brain dominated thinking and was primarily the seat of language, analysis, and high-level learned motor skills. The right, or minor hemisphere, was considered less highly evolved and unable to understand reading or speech. Until Sperry's research, some scientists even believed that the right hemisphere functioned at such a low rate that it wasn't even conscious. While this is accurate to a degree, Sperry showed that the right hemisphere was a whiz at recognizing faces, reading maps, and dealing with other spatial relationships. Their work disproved previous theories, finding that instead of the brain being composed of interchangeable, shared parts, the circuits of the brain are largely hardwired with their own special properties. Sperry was not the first researcher to examine the different parts of the brain. Mapping brain functions date from the 18th and 19th centuries with Hall, Florence, and Broca. Even before that, in 1649, René Descartes described the pineal gland as the control center of the body and mind. In 1808, Franz Joseph Gall published work on phrenology, suggesting that different parts of the brain were responsible for different characteristics. In 1824, Marie-Jean Pierre Florence used ablation to study behavior. She destroyed parts of the brain in pigeons and observed the consequences. In 1855, Bartholomew Paniza found that the occipital lobe is essential for vision. In 1861, Paul Broca discussed cortical localization. He had a patient that was unable to speak intelligibly and discovered that this was due to a lesion of an area of the brain that later became known as Broca's area. In 1936, Walter Freeman Formed first lobotomy in the United States in which the frontal lobe was removed. In 1953, Brenda Milner discussed patient H.M. who suffered from memory loss from hippocampal surgery. In 1972, Roger Sperry was awarded the California Scientist of the Year. In 1979, Sperry won two awards. The first was the Wolf Prize in Medicine for his studies on the functional differentiation of the right and left hemispheres of the brain. The second was the Albert Lasker Medical Research Award. In 1981, Sperry was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discoveries concerning the functional specialization of the cerebral hemispheres. He shared the award with David H. Hubel and Torsten N. Weasel. In 1989, Sperry received the National Medal of Science from President George Bush Sr. On April 17, 1994, Roger Sperry passed away, but his research lives on. Today, Michael Gazaniga, who interned with Sperry, continues Sperry's research. There were several news articles that covered Roger Sperry's split brain research, especially around 1981 when Sperry won his Nobel Prize. The media covered findings of the research since there was little or no controversy surrounding Sperry. While the zeitgeist of the Times was in favor of behaviorism and the ideas of researchers such as Watson and Skinner, Psychology ultimately accepted Sperry's findings into the field. The initial skepticism that split brain research experienced was due to the fact that the findings contradicted the generally held view that sectioning of the corpus callosum produced no definite behavioral effects. Sperry's research contradicted the generally held view, which was based on misinterpretation of evidence and showed that there is a difference in functioning between the left and right sides of the brains. The research on split brain helped give rise to cognitive neuroscience, a hybrid of cognitive psychology and the neurosciences. The two goals of this field are to determine how brain functions give rise to mental activity and to correlate aspects of information processing with brain regions. Specifically, split brain research has led to an understanding of the role of the two hemispheres in perceptual and cognitive processes. It has also raised important questions with regard to human consciousness and self-awareness.
Sperry's research and other ideas, such as the belief that the mind is similar to a computer, all have helped cognition to replace behaviorism as the dominant belief system for psychology. Cognitive psychologists are focusing on the process of knowing rather than merely responding to stimuli. The important factors are mental processes and not stimulus-response connections. The emphasis switched on behavior to the mind. The behavioral responses help us make inferences about the mental processes at work. Sperry showed that the right hemisphere is, indeed, a conscious system in its own right, perceiving, thinking, remembering, reasoning, willing, and emoting at all a characteristically human level, and both the left and right hemisphere may be conscious simultaneously in different, even in mutually conflicting, mental experiences that run along in parallel. The two hemispheres, although separated from one another, are usually in agreement so that no obvious conflict results. The split brain research showed that definite behavioral phenomena can be demonstrated by severing the corpus callosum. We will now be demonstrating Roger Sperry's findings with split brain research. People suffering from a rare form of epilepsy in which they experience excessive signaling of the nerve cells often have no other option to stop the seizures except for severing their corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is the link between the left and right hemispheres. Patient AM has just recently undergone surgery in which her corpus callosum was severed. Dr. Honeycutt is going to perform tasks with patient AM that will demonstrate Dr. Robert Sperry's research in which he concluded that the two hemispheres are specialized in different tasks. Patient AM, focus on the dot and tell me what you see. Tree. Focus on the dot again and tell me what you see. Apple. Everything that patient AM sees in her right visual field travels to the left hemisphere, which is the dominant hemisphere for language and speech. Okay. Focus on the dot and tell me what you see. I don't see anything. This time, pick up the pen with your left hand and close your, hand, your eyes and let your hand do the work. Draw what you saw. What did you draw? A house. Why did you draw a house? I don't know. When information falls to the left of the fixation point, that information goes to the disconnected right hemisphere. Patient AM is unable to name the object, but can draw it with her left hand. I'll focus on the dot one more time and tell me what you see. Hammer. Okay. Pick up the pen one more time. Close your eyes and let your hand do the work. Draw what you saw. Now first, can you tell me what you saw? I saw a hammer. Okay, and can you tell me what you drew? A saw. Why'd you draw a saw? I don't know. This experiment allows you to see how powerful our unconscious processes are at influencing our conscious selves. The great pleasure and feeling in my right brain is more than my left brain can find the words to tell you. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my So much space.